Okay guys, sorry, I was just admiring myself. <laughs> now let me introduce myself. My name is Chidima Igbinede and I'm a YouTuber based in Ibadan. Today I'm going to be telling you guys how I have spent over a year in Ibadan and I still do not have friends. You guys might be thinking this is weird. Yes, I know, I know, I know, but I have my explanations. So guys, before we get into the gist, I know you guys cannot wait for the gist, but before we get into it, just take a minute to subscribe to this channel. Let the ministry of this channel move. I don't know what have I done to you people. Please subscribe. And to my returning subscribers, please. I just want to say I appreciate you guys. You keep watching, you keep liking, you keep commenting and sharing my videos. Thank you guys so much. We need to get this channel to at least 200 subscribers. Like it's been a long time since last year. Please subscribe to my channel. So, guys, let's get into the video. get into the whole gist. I want to let you guys know that my parents celebrated 31 years in marriage on the 13th of April. They have been married for 31 good years. You guys already know that it's not being to be married. Like you see people get married and in the next two, um, two years, three years, they're divorced. But they've been together for 31 good years. Daddy and mommy, congratulations if you can see this video and I'm so glad to have you as my parents. So guys, let's get into the gist. So um i said i was going to talk to you guys about how i have been in ibadan for like uh, a year and three months and i still don't have friends is that weird <laughs> okay fine let me put out this disclaimer that i am not alone i am not the type to just want to stay inside the house and just be looking and not have any friends of course i want friends that i could be able to go out with just with and stuff but for some reasons in the city of Ibadan, I don't have friends. Yes, before I came to Ibadan, I have friends that we used to go out, we used to just and hang out and stuff. But when I heard I was going to come here, I was like, I was scared. Like, this is a whole new environment. Yes, I attended my school, my university here in Ibadan, but school life is different from actually living, living, living here. In school, like most of the time, I didn't even used to go out. I'd just be in the school environment, go to class, come back and stuff. Not really going out. Like, some days could go and you don't have to step out of the school environment. But here, like, this is the actual life, living here in Ibadan. So, why is it that I don't have friends? First of all, I already had a bias when I was coming here. I was like, oh God, I'm coming to this place now. This place is not as bubbly as Lagos. We already know that in Lagos, everybody is always very active. Like, if you're not chasing something, the thing is chasing you. If you're not chasing a boss, a boss is chasing you. Everybody is just always active. Even if you wake up in the middle of the night, like, let's say 12, 1 a.m. and you come out to the road, you will see people. It's will be as if, like nothing happened like nobody's sleeping it's like everybody's still on the road by that time that's how bubbly lagos is it's like a city that never sleeps on the contrary here in ibadan hmm. i think like 5 6 p.m in the evening you find out the shops are already closing like everywhere is already shutting down you can feel all the activities gradually coming to a halt that's how it is here so having to adjust from that very bish bish life to the very slow calm life here was kind of a difficulty for me then let me talk about the language barrier you guys already know that i am Igbo, and i i understand yoruba a little bit but i do not speak so when someone talks to you here in yoruba and i get to respond in english to some people they say that's disrespect so they'll be like i'm speaking yoruba to you and you're speaking English. why can't you speak yoruba and then I have started explaining myself that, guys, I'm not Yoruba. And I'd be like, oh, you lived in Lagos all your life. How come you can't speak Yoruba? I'm like, duh, can you speak my language? And then I move on from there. So, guys, language. Yo. So, in order for me not to be fighting with unseen forces, people that are forcing me to speak Yoruba that I cannot speak, I'll just come and stay in my house. Now, since I cannot be friends with you if I can't speak Yoruba, that's like another reason why I really do not have much friends or I don't have friends here in Ibadan. The culture shock and stuff, like the way of life here is different from what I'm used to. I remember when I nearly came here like three months into my living here in Ibadan, I used to do everything possible to just stay indoors. Like I didn't want to interact with the outside world. Then when I go out to buy stuff like things for the house, I would buy a whole lot of things so that I don't need to go out in the next so many days. In fact, I will buy things that can last me for like the next two years. Okay, not two years, I'm just exaggerating. But basically, I'll buy things in bulk so that I don't have to go out again. I will stay home for like seven days. If I'm supposed to say seven days a week, I will stay home. Like, I'll just make myself so comfortable. I'm like, I beg, I don't want to mingle with the outside world. I was still suffering from the shock of leaving my daddy's house. Yes. 
So that was what happened and I decided to just stay on my own. Like, hey, I don't have friends that I could just be like, let's just do something crazy. Let's just wake up today and do something crazy. Let's go to the cinema. Let's go to a place we've never been before. Let's just go and explore. In Lagos, I used to do that with my friend, but here I can't do that because I don't have any friend that's willing to take that risk. It seems like everybody here is on slow mo. Like, everybody just wants to do things easy, take life easy. I don't have strength for trouble. I don't have strength to be, um, to be adventurous, basically. And... Since I've come to realize that that's the lifestyle here, like nobody wants to do anything out of the box, like everybody just wants to go with the norm. So I don't want to say that I don't want to say that I have come to be living in that same zone. I don't I don't want to say that I am not that person that just wants to go with the flow. But since I've seen that that's what works here, I guess I'll just stay in my own lane because as much as possible, I'm trying not to get too sucked into the culture of this place. I don't know why, but I feel like it's not just what I am used to. Talking about getting the job, I, I think I've hinted you guys severally on this channel that getting the job here was very difficult for me because the kind of jobs they were offering, they were not willing to pay up to the standard that I was used to. So it just felt like I would just go and be stressing myself and then at the end of the month, they'll probably give me something that I will not appreciate and I'll just end up feeling bad about it. And I, I tried to compare, like, if I was to have a 9-to-5 job and the pay that they would give me at the end of the month, if it was equal to what I would earn from CV writing or even less than what I would earn from CV writing. So what's the use of going to, um, to having a 9-to-5 job here in Ibadan? So that's why I totally scrapped that part. I stopped applying for jobs. Like today, if I see any job that is in Ibadan, I do not bother applying for it. Because if the, the few interviews I attended, like, when they say people should, like, how much are you expecting to get paid? And people open their mouth and say 40,000. This one will say 30,000. This one will say 50,000. Like, me. Like, no, I think I'm in the wrong crowd. So, it's not pride. It's what these people have been used to. And they've learned to survive on this amount of money at the end of the month. But I can't do that because I'm not used to earning that low. That's why I just had to scrap the whole job hunting part. So I just decided to continue my freelancing and stuff. And by freelancing, I mean I do CV writing, cover letter writing, LinkedIn optimization, personal statement writing, resignation letter, any kind of letter except for proposals. So every other type of writing, that's any, and any other type of writing service that you need, yes, I'm available. Sorry, guys, I was getting the word already mumbled up in my mouth, but you guys understand what I'm trying to say, Sha. So guys, that's how I decided that maybe making friends here is not for me. It's not just working. Maybe because the lifestyle here is not the same type I've been used to. So I'm finding it difficult to get sucked into this lifestyle. That's why I decided to just basically stay on my own. And then thanks to COVID-19 too, we can't really go out and explore so much because we're trying to be careful not to get infected with the virus. So that's another reason why. Your friend, sorry, your girl has no friends here in Ibadan. So, guys, I don't know. I don't know if any one of you has gotten to experience a situation whereby you move from your comfort zone or a place that you've lived basically for a very long time and you have to go to another place and start trying to get accustomed to their culture, their lifestyle and everything there. How did you find it? Was it difficult for you? Was it very easy? Like, what was the process like? I would like to know. I've shared my story with you guys and i also like to know what your own story is like. So guys, please in the comment section, just tell me what you think about this video and um, like this video, subscribe, do not forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed, please. This channel has not reached 200 subscribers, like in a very long time, since. Guys, help your girl to get to 200 subscribers, so. Alright guys, so I'll see you in my next video.